Steel construction system is the most effective and fastest way of constructing buildings with greater heights, therefore, in this video you will learn types of steel, types of steel section, types of steel column, beam, slab, and wall, components for steel connection, and kinds of steel connection. Steel construction system, types of steel. 1. Carbon steel, a low-cost variety of metal that is susceptible to rust, having carbon content of 0.3% to 2%, that becomes stronger when more carbon is added, and when heat treated is applied. However, more carbon content makes the metal less weldable and ductile, used in buildings, bridges, highways and other civil works. 2. Alloy steel, it is more costly than carbon steel, and provides greater corrosion resistance, a type of steel that has several elements other than carbon, making it more tough. Hard and wear resistant, but less malleable compared to carbon steel. It can be used as girders, bars, pipes, plates, sheets, and more. 3. Stainless steel, more costly than of an alloy steel, and it contains chromium that makes the steel highly resistant to corrosion and rust. It is very malleable and softer than carbon steel but when heated and more carbon is applied it becomes hard and brittle, suitable for exterior cladding of buildings. And for decorative steel designs such as grills, sink and countertop. Classification of carbon steel 1. Low carbon steel Steel contains a maximum carbon content of 0.3%, hard but not brittle. 2. Medium carbon steel Steel contains a maximum carbon content of 0.6%. 3. High carbon steel. Steel contains a maximum carbon content of 1%. 4. Ultra high carbon steel. Steel contains a maximum carbon content of 2%. Types of steel section. 1. Flat bar. The most basic support material in building construction could be used as structural support. 2. Angle bar, a steel forming a right angle or an L-shaped section, can be used for ceiling support, roof truss, or even railings. 3. Channel bar, it has a parallel flange channel, attached on both ends of a web and forming a C-shape or U-shaped section. Commonly used for roof purlins. 4. I-beam, also called as H-beam, can be used independently or be embedded in a concrete. Commonly used for structural steel beams. 5. Wide flange, similar to an I-beam, but has a wider flange. Frequently used for structural steel columns. Square tube, a hollow structural steel, having a square section. Can be used for fencing and grills. 7. Rectangular tube, a hollow structural steel, having a rectangular section can be used as trellis, rafter, or decorative wall partition. 8. Round tube, a hollow steel tubular, having a circular section. Commonly used for lally columns, railings, and scaffolding. 9. Rebar, also known as deformed bar, a long solid piece of metal having lugs and indentations for better concrete bonding, used as a tensile reinforcement for concrete. Types of steel column 1. Wide flange, also known as H-beam, wherein the length of the flanges is equal to depth of the web. 2. Cruciform, it is made up of two I-beam, wherein the first is cut longitudinally on the midspan of its web, then welded perpendicularly on the longitudinal midspan web of the second I-beam on both sides, to form a cross-shaped section of a column. 3. Square or rectangular tubing, a hollow box structural steel column. 4. Round pipe, a hollow circular structural steel column. Types of steel beams. 1. I-beam, most popular steel beams, wherein the tapered flanges are smaller than the depth of its web. 2. Wide flange, also known as H-beam, wherein the length of the flanges is equal to depth of the web. 3. Plate girder, a steel girder built up from different plates that are welded together or riveted, comprising of cover plates, flange angles, 
stiffeners, and a web plate. Fourth, box girder, is similar to a plate girder, except that it has two web plate, forming a built-up steel box section. Five, joist girder, a truss girder used for supporting an open web steel joist. Six, castellated beam, a wide flange beam, cut longitudinal at midspan of its web on a zigzag pattern, then welding both of the halves together on its peaks. Increasing its depth without increasing its weight. 7. Channel, a C-shaped steel that is often used in conjunction with I-beams, and can be formed as a non-standard I-beam when welded back-to-back. -back. 8. Rectangular tubing, a hollow box structural steel beam. Types of steel slabs. 1. Light gauge steel joist, is a floor framing system similar to wood joist framing, except for the reason that it uses light gauge steel joist as the material, and needs a strap bridging to prevent rotation or lateral displacement of the joists. 2. Composite slab, a slab that uses a corrugated steel sheet, as a permanent formwork and can act as a slab reinforcement, known as metal decking. Types of metal decking. 1. Form decking. The metal decking serves as a permanent from work for reinforced concrete slab, until the slab can support itself and its live load. 2. Composite decking. The metal decking has an embossed rib pattern to bond with the concrete, and welded with shear studs, connected to the supporting joist or beam below the decking. 3. Cellular decking. A flat steel sheet is welded on the metal decking to form a series of raceways for electrical and communications wiring. It can also serve as an acoustic ceiling when the voids are filled with glass fibers. Types of steel walls 1. Light gauge steel stud is a load bearing wall similar to a wood wall framing construction, but it is framed by a light gauge steel studs which provides cavities for utilities or insulation then covered by a sheathing and a variety of finishing materials. 2. Steel Plate Shear Wall A vertical steel infill plates, one story high and one bay wide, connected to the surrounding beams and columns, effective for bracing a building against wind or earthquake forces. 3. Insulated Metal Panels, lightweight metal wall system, made with two coated aluminum or steel panels, with an insulating foam on the center, mostly used in commercial establishments. 4. Partition wall, our decorative steel patterned wall, used to divide interior spaces, but allows air and sunlight to pass through. 5. Curtain wall, a lightweight steel or aluminum framing of a glass wall, commonly used in high-rise buildings. Types of curtain wall. 1. Stick. A curtain wall consisting of an extruded transoms anchored to a slab, and a pre-cut mullion which are assembled on site, to hold a fixed or movable glass pane. 2. Unities, is a pre-assembled section of a curtain wall, having a one story in height, ready to be attached on a spandrel beam, allowing a fast construction phase. Types of Steel Framing 1. Wall Bearing a steel framing constructed on top of a foundation masonry wall that utilizes light gauge steel studs to support the load coming from the walls and floor framing system above it. Often used in the construction of residential houses or low-rise structures. 2. Skeleton, a steel framing construction system that uses heavyweight steel columns, beams and composite slab on a grid pattern often used in the construction of multi-story building. 3. Long span, a steel framing construction system that is widely used in industrial buildings, auditorium, theater, and exhibition spaces, wherein the interior space should be column-free. Having a minimum distance of 12 meters span from column to column. Types of long span steel framing. 1. Girders. 2. Trusses 3. Rigid frames 4. Arches 5. Cantilever suspension spans Components for steel connections
1. Anchor bolts, are bolts embedded on a column foundation, that receives the base plate of a steel column. 2. Base plate, a metal plate bolted on top of a foundation, wherein the bottom end of a steel column is welded. 3. Angle cleat, small angle bar, attached to the bottom end of a web or flange of a steel column, connecting to the base plate. 4. Base stiffener, a small triangular metal plate, welded on the base plate and bottom end of a steel column. 5. Splice plate, a piece of rectangular metal plate, used for butt end splicing of a steel. 6. Intermediate plate, a shim inserted between the inside of a splicing plate, and the bottom flange of the adjoining steel column, which is not aligned to the existing flange of the column below. 7. Backer plate, a shim inserted between the inside of a splicing plate, and the bottom flange of the adjoining steel column, which is aligned to the existing flange of the column below, but does not have the same flange thickness. 8. Butt plate, a thick rectangular plate, welded on top of an existing steel column and at the bottom end of a smaller steel column. 9. Fin plate, a rectangular steel plate bolted at the end part of the web of a steel beam, then welded to the surface of the receiving column or beam. 10. Double angle cleat, two angle metal plate, bolted on both sides of the end part of the web of a steel beam, then bolted to the surface of the receiving column or beam, used on a framed connection. 11. End plate, a rectangular steel plate welded at the end of a steel beam, then bolted to the surface of the receiving column, used on a semi-rigid connection. 12. Seat angle, a small angle bar that is bolted or welded on the bottom flange of a beam that it carries, and attached to the surface of the receiving column, used on a seated connection. 13. Stabilizing angle, a small angle bar that is bolted or welded on the top flange of a beam that needs to be fixed in place, and attached to the surface of the receiving column. Used on a seated connection. 14. Web stiffener, a series of rectangular metal plates, wherein its edge is vertically welded on the side of a web of an I-beam or a wide flange. 15. Haunches, a triangular-shaped steel with an inverted T-section, attached at the topmost of a steel column and connected at the bottom of a rafter, beam or girder, acting as a corbel beam. 16. Gusset plates, a thick steel plate wherein the shape is customized to connect parts of steel roof truss and beams or girders to columns. 17. Shims, a plain or tapered metal used as a spacer, to fill in small gaps, to adjust for better fit, or to provide a level surface. Kinds of steel connections 1. Welded, fabrication process that joins material, by means of fusing two steel together caused by heat, that becomes one when it cools down. 2. Bolted, a structural steel connection that joins two pieces of metal, by inserting threaded fastener onto the metal holes, and tightening its end by a fitted nut. 3. Bolted and welded, a combination of welded and bolted structural steel connection. 4. Riveted, a structural steel connection that joins two pieces of metal, by inserting a metal pin onto the metal holes, in which the rounded head is received by a dolly, while the other end is being hammered by a riveter to form another head. Types of welding joints 1. But joint, a welding of two pieces of aligned metal, by means of joining their end-to-end -end but on a straight line. 2. Lap joint, a welding of two pieces of parallel metal, by means of overlapping their ends at a certain length. 3. Corner joint, a welding of two pieces of perpendicular metal, by means of joining their ends at a right angle, forming an L-shape or a corner. 4. T-joint, a welding of two pieces of perpendicular metal, by means of joining the end of one metal perpendicular to the midspan of the other, forming T-shape connection. 5. Edge joint, a welding of two pieces of parallel metal attached side by side, by means of joining their ends edges together at a certain length, in which one or both plates may be bended at an angle. Types of bolted joints. 1. Single cover but joint, a but end connection of two pieces of metal, 
by means of attaching a single piece of a metal on one side, that overlaps at the ends of both metal that are being joined. 2. Double cover but joint, a but end connection of two pieces of metal, by means of attaching two pieces of a metal on both sides, that overlaps at the ends of both metal that are being joined. 3. Single lap joint, a lapping of two pieces of metal, then bolted. 4. Double lap joint, a lapping of two parallel metal, on a single piece of metal inserted on its middle, and then bolted. Types of riveted joints. 1. But rivet, a but end connection of two pieces of metal, by means of attaching two pieces of a metal, that overlaps at the ends of both metal that are being joined, and then riveted. 2. Lap rivet, a lapping of two pieces of metal, then riveted. For plumbing utility construction system. Watch the next video on College of Architecture channel.